<laughs> Love it, dude. One. Let's see if we can do it in time. Okay, yeah, Two, sure. Three. time dude sometimes it works out it's working brian moss how are you my friend i'm doing well michael how are you dude great this has been a very long time coming you and i have tried to set this up i don't even know for how many months i'm so glad we could finally make it happen i think it, i think i got caught up in the whole time zone difference and us not changing clocks and you know it gets crazy around here so it it does get crazy around here and it's it's got to be it's got to be nuts for you guys you know a touring band who just you know crushes it out there on the road not being able to get out there i mean what's it been like dude i mean you know it's uh it's kind of sucked to be honest with you um you know it's like the whole super power and superhero thing like i mean i'm just clark kent every day you know yeah that's, yeah. that's kind of boring but um, it has been nice to be at home and take care and take care of things at home that I've always said that I would do. So I have a, a very large honeydew list yeah. and, you know, it's, it's been nice to, to spend time here, but you know, not being able to travel and not being able to see family. It's like, you know, it's like I'm quasi home. It's not, it's not full on, like, you know, being able to do whatever I want to do, you know? So, um, but the band is doing great. I mean, everybody's, you know, happy and healthy and safe and, you know, we're just lucky to be alive and lucky to still have each other and, and live in the same city. Now, where is home for you guys? We live in the greater Phoenix area, kind of we're all a little around like Tempe and Chandler and Phoenix proper and all that sort of stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, for everybody that's just tuning in that might not know who my guest is, uh, happy Tuesday. Today we're doing it a little bit different. Uh, this is Brian Moss from Spafford. And um, so you guys are all from Arizona or did you guys get together there and move there or like, you know, give, give us a little background. I mean, that's what makes the band unique is that um, actually one of the guys is, is from Arizona. Nick is, is from Arizona, a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, but Jordan, our bass player, he's from the South. Uh, Red is from Chicago area and I'm from New Jersey. 
and yeah, we all met out here. And what were you all doing out there? How the hell did you all meet out there? Twenty <laughs> man, <laughs> just living life, no direction, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I think that that's that's how we met is we didn't have like we had we all had talent, we all had common interest in music, and and yeah, you know. The first question is like, do you do you want to like try and like make something out of this, you know? And if you yeah. didn't, you know, you're, you're, it wasn't going to work out. So I think that we finally all had that that interest to to just give this thing a real shot. And uh, you know, we were we were young and dumb enough to give it a, give it a go, and yeah. you know, it fairly succeeded. And up until now, you know, the but, recent bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but you know it'll break, and and we'll all get back to it. And yeah. you know we're just kind of biding our time a little bit, but also taking this time to like revamp and, and reinvent ourselves, and and you know to have more experiences, to to have more stories, to write more music, and you know share experiences off the road, you know which is which are just as valuable as spending time on the road. You know, Dude, um, totally. You got you you got to live a life to tell about it. Yeah, and like building that chemistry and, and all that, you know. So, it's how many it's, years have you guys been together? Um, it's been ten. I mean, New Year's two thousand nine into two thousand ten was our first show billed as Spafford. Yeah, and we made it was like one hundred and fifty dollars that we made for that night. We yeah. played three sets or maybe even four sets, and I'm pretty sure we played Midnight Rider in every single one of the sets. <laughs> we we all had like. 10 songs or something. Well, so I got a bunch of things I wanted to talk about. And I asked you to, you know, maybe bring some tracks on, on some, some influences that you might have or anybody you've been digging lately. But one thing that, and I mentioned this uh, in, that, in that first video I did of you guys, that one thing that really, really stood out was not, not just, you know, the musicianship and how well you communicated each other on, with each other on stage, was literally how just good the sound was you guys are like just a really like good sounding band you know i i talk a lot about you know arrangements and blah 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 but one thing you guys had is like not just the mix but like the tones that you all have like the actual like timbre of the drums and the bass and and the keys and everything all <clears throat> blend together and it's like it's just a really good sound like really stepped out you know it was something that it stood out to me can you talk about like maybe if that's something that just fell together or if you guys you know actively work on on that from a production standpoint and you know each of your own sounds as a cohesive group yeah i mean as, as this thing started it was me and jordan um jordan was on the drums and he was the original drummer he's now the bass player i, I was didn't on, know that yeah i was on acoustic guitar he was on djembe Two guys yeah. called ourselves Spafford, playing yeah. open mics, playing some original tunes and dispatch covers. And <laughs> I love it. Right? <clears throat> so <laughs> I love it. you know, and this this was like popping. We were we we the, the inception of the band was really in Prescott, Arizona, which like this was hot, man. This was like the coolest place to be. If you were part of it. Um, it was it was certainly the coolest. There wasn't a lot of rules and stuff, and we were getting let away with like open fires everywhere, and like you know it was it had four seasons up there, being Arizona, but there's four seasons up there, so it would snow and like it was the outdoor patio at Coyote Joe's, mm. and like yeah. this was just the coolest place to be in 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, it just it just was. <clears throat> and so anyway, so when Jordan and I started getting a little bit more serious about this, and tried to bring on other players like bass players and keyboard players and all that stuff. Um, we also kind of started divvying up the business aspect of things. Cause that's, you know, this, it is a business and there's a lot of things to have to take care of. And we were completely DIY from, from the get go. So yeah. I was really good at like, just kind of talking people and like dealing with the people who would pay us and the talent buyers and, you know, trying to book shows and, and all that sort of stuff. And Jordan was really good at like other logistical things, especially when it came down to the sound. So yeah. when we originally, you know, started the band, we were um, we were recording, and I think we still have like 
some of the first recordings of this band ever because it was only yeah. like 2010 so like we had macbook pros and you know some yeah. garage band or something and a microphone yeah. and we just stuck it up in a room and you know 90 percent of it was crowd noise but yeah. we still yeah. have those shows you know and and over time as we started recording like jordan just just stuck like glue to this like whole idea of how things should sound and yeah. where they should be placed and you know we're talking in the mix and talking about microphones and this and that and like you know as we as we always played these shows like very early on if we made to you know had a show that was 150 dollars or something yeah. we would always split it up into a, a, you know like five parts and like four of the guys would get you know a certain percentage and the rest of it would go into the band fund and we always had the band fund to play, pay for gas and maybe a hotel or like microphones and that sort of thing Right, so right. Jordan would always, you know, and over time, over 10 years, that grows, you know. So <clears throat> still to this day, Jordan calls calls me up and he's like, I got another list of gear, you know. <laughs> and it's like, and I don't ask questions. I'm like, you, you sure about this, you know. Like, yeah. I try to get involved. I'm like, well, you know, you think that we can really build on this stuff, you know, five years down the road, <laughs> you know, like thinking I know what I'm talking about. And like I said earlier, like backstage like i just i just am not really good at the whole technical side of things so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> right and clearly i have a microphone here and i, I can't get it to work for this <laughs> session so sorry <laughs> sorry to it's but, okay uh, it sounds great yeah so so yeah jordan you know a lot of this goes to goes to him and uh you know he really took on mixing the band and early mixing the band and all that stuff and as this grew and as we like turned into the sound and stuff like that um, both of our jobs respectively had to be split now. So over time I had to like really deal with the agents and the managers and deal with like, you know, and the accountants and like deal with that sort of stuff while Jordan's like dealing with like the crew and the logistics and all that. So it's really beautiful to see like this DIY project blossom, you know, that now he's got like all these people that like will go to him still to this day at shows like, Hey, I'm not really sure like what this is supposed to sound like or how this is supposed to work or whatever. And he's like, all right, let me, you know, take time out of me practicing the bass right now and go, you know, kind yeah. of show you how this is set up and all this stuff, you know? So, um, you know, he, he gets all the credit for why it sounds so good. And then <clears throat> on the other hand, we love high quality instruments. And, you know, for me, it comes down to the guitar and the amp and obviously the pedals, you know, there's the components of it. And I've always been an analog guy. Um, I've never had like digital boxes or anything like that. I've always heard that they suck your tone or if I was using a volume pedal, it suck your tone and like, and all that stuff. So a good, good guitar, a good amp and a killer microphone. You really don't need much else to make the band sound good. And, yeah. you know, uh, throwing credit to, you know, our drummer and our drummers along the way and, and Red, our keyboard player. I mean, Red every six months, has like a new keyboard. He's like, yeah, I got the, the virus CI two twenty thousand. 20,000, you know, and we're like, he, he sounds great. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and, and he's got like the nicest gear he just does. And then Jordan knows the right microphones. And like, we, we experiment a lot with, with stuff, but he's like, take these microphones, put it on that Leslie. And then we listen back and we're like, Oh my God. Like, yeah, that's it. You know? Now, but how much do of that do you actually get to implement? on tour when you're dealing with different front of house guys and different, you know, if you're doing a festival and all that, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it, I'm telling you, that's one of the main things. Like when I watched a few of your videos from different shows, there's a level of consistency there, which, um, I, I, I was very pleasantly surprised to see. It was amazing, frankly. I well, I can't give you all the secrets, Michael. Don't know. give me all the no. secrets. No, the truth is, is that we use this, we try to use the same guys, you know? Yeah. And, you know, when we're on tour, we have a front of house guy. Um, so we got outnumbered by our crew, basically, on every tour. There's four guys in the band, but we would roll with five crew members. So you have Damn. a tour manager and a front of house manager and lighting designer and, you know, like, uh, you know, techs and all that stuff. And, you know, it's a big operation out there. So, you know, they're, they know exactly where these microphones need to be every single night and packing them up and, you know, setting them up every single night. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's a little, we're a little army out there and, and doing this thing and, uh, you know, it becomes very consistent. So, so that's what we try to attain. And that's what we kind of turned this into. It was like a really well-oiled machine. 
this thing called music. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, we learned very quickly that there's so much more than just yeah. practicing. Well, well let's talk guitar for a minute. Okay. So, so uh, you talked <laughs> about your rig. Yes. What is what is what is your rig, and then and then we'll jump into playing a couple tracks. So real quick, what is your live rig like? Um, so I have a custom guitar, and anybody can check it out at thomasmolanaguitars.com. I don't have it with me right now. It's it's at our studio. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm using actually Andrew, my my luthier, his his strat. He lets me nice. borrow a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we're working on a new guitar right now, so I have like 19 guitars that like I'm playing. And I'm trying to like fall in love with these guitars like for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time so I can find out what I really like about it. And I've yeah. never played a strat, you know, up until a couple months ago when he let me have this. And I <laughs> and I just haven't put it down. So um Is this a quote of yours that fantasy came up with? Is, yeah, yeah, yes, I said that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Fantasy, are you how are you? Up there, or are they? Yeah. So, so check this out. So you I can just zip them. So, so, so I can just click on whatever oh. and, and and throw them up here. Right. But I, I have I have tremendous mods. Let me say hi to everybody. By the way, I got fishing out here. I got fantasy. I saw bluebird out here. I saw Ween. I saw Vandy. I saw uh, Beware. How are you guys doing? Happy Tuesday again. Again, we got uh, Brian from Spafford with us tonight. But yeah. Uh, we, we can, we can pick whatever we want so we can take questions. Um, so anyway, so you're getting a new guitar. What amp do you like to use? What's your go-to? So, um, I was working with an amp doctor up in Prescott, um, for, for a long time up there. And, uh, and he sold me a 1969 plush, which I really n don't know too much about other than it's really old and it's a pain in the ass to get worked on. <laughs> uh, you know, especially when it just decides to break down in Atlanta, uh, yeah. which, you know, happened last tour and it broke down in Boston. You, you only have one of them? No, I have a backup twin, but that, you know, yeah, that seems I, to just want to like, yeah, the speakers like grow legs and they like fucking walk out of it and they find them in the back <laughs> of the trailer. Some, you know, like it's just, it, just, it gets really beat up in a trailer. Yeah, um, totally. And especially the trailers that like we're, we're bringing with us. I, I think they're like more for just like caravanning horses around or something, you know, <laughs> like not really expensive electronics, just expensive, expensive livestock. Dude, I, guess. Dude, I, I, uh, I, I feel you, man. I mean, I never toured like you did, but just doing local stuff, you know, we had a trailer and I had my two amps, you know, in the road cases with all the padding and all the bullshit. And but man, when you're dealing with tube amps and the analog stuff, it shakes in there. It, it yeah. every time you open that that thing up, you don't know what you're gonna get. Basically, um, and, and especially the older amps like that, or like if you play a lot of outdoor festivals and you got generator power, you got dirty power in one room or whatever. Do, do you bring a power conditioner since you have an old amp? Uh, we used to bring like a distro with us, but uh, yeah. most of the venues that we've been playing like already has clean power. Like, thank yeah. God, only like once in a while we come up and we're like, how many circuits are back here? <laughs> and I'm only asking because I'm making it seem like I think I know what voltage yeah. and amperage is. But, you know. Uh, the guy's just sitting there smoking a cigarette. He's like, dude, just, just yeah, put it like, in. Dude. Just, what do you think I'm going to do? Like, you know, like yeah. build a whole system <laughs> for you right now. So so generally, like, and we, we have, we've brought distros before, which can like apparently plug into that and then like reboot everything and make it like all clean power so that we do have clean power. Um, yeah. But yeah, more often than not, if it's bad power, you're just going to deal with it. So, so yeah, so I have, you know, the, the, the custom guitar, you can check it out at thomasmolanaguitars.com. Um, and the amp is a 1969 plush and I've been using uh, EV 12 L's with that. Yeah. Yeah. Which I have found to be like kind of my tone. Like I could throw anything at these. And when I'd like, throw a synthesizer on top of a octave and, and all, and like is shit's getting crazy. Like it'll never blow those speakers. Never. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but sometimes Jordan's like, dude, like enough with the octave, you know, and I'm like, but it's, <laughs> but it's so deep and it's so much fun, you know? Um, like literally on stage, like dude, knock it off. Oh yeah. He's like, and I'm like, all right, I'll turn it off. Um, do you, do you, um, you guys use in ears? Yeah. Eh, I know. 
Yeah, we have them. <laughs> JH Audio, I love you guys. They've been really good to us. And yeah. um, ever since I started with in-ears, I just, in particular, as like the guitar player, something is off. Yeah. And I yeah. haven't been able to figure it out. Um, I've talked about wanting to put like a condenser microphone on the on my back of my shirt or like the back of my guitar strap. So it sits on the back. So it picks up my amp from where I would be standing and my ears would be. Because that's when I, an idea. Right. It's, cause it's like the back strap, you know? Somebody make yeah. it. Give me give me a call, you know, put this thing on a on a strap, condenser microphone, pointing towards the back, the amp's pointing at it, and then I'm and I'm getting that, you know, a stereo signal. Um so yeah, they, I know. they sound like really clean. Um, but there's something about me that I like the rawness of the room. Absolutely. Um, and I'd rather feel like the energy. If I'm having a hard time hearing anything, you know, whether it's wedges or or in ears, I'd rather feel the room, you know, and go with the wedges. So dude, I, I mean, absolutely. I <laughs> I mean, there's nothing there's nothing worse than than, you know, you have this really nice guitar. And like you, you've worked on your tone and you got this really great amp and you love how it sounds behind you. And the sound guy comes up in some random you know, shithole place and he wants to put a 57 right on the goddamn cone and turn your amp way down and jack the monitors right in front of you. I'm like, no, that's, that's the exact opposite of what I'm going for, my friend. <laughs> that's the exact, you, you, that's, you, where are we? Russia? Like, this is like, what's happening? Um, hey, I'll take a 57 though. I, I've, <clears throat> I've gone back the 609s and the 57. I use several different mics on, on my amp. Dude, there's nothing wrong with the 57. No, I yeah. love it. It's just, yeah. it's, it's just, there's always that guy right. who comes right up. He puts it right on the screen, right on the nose. <clears throat> wants the amp all the way down and wants to dime out your monitor so he can have complete right. control. And I'm just <clears throat> like, dude, I'm never coming back here. That's why we hire our, our own guys because then we can pay them and then we can tell them what to do. <laughs> oh man! Well, let's jump into some tracks. So you know you're you're familiar with the channel. We like to play a lot of music on here, and uh, you know we also take requests. I don't know what your time frame is, but uh, I asked you to bring a couple things, and it could be something you're into now, something that got you going when we were young. You know what do you? What are you feeling? What are you feeling like sharing with us today? My YouTube usage <clears throat> is minimal. It's not minimal. Oh, look, I jumped on YouTube a long time ago because I wanted to make viral videos. Yeah. Didn't so matter. I could make a viral video. And at the end of this video, I could flash facebook.com slash Bafford music because right. I wanted to just make it. So I have a video which I made 10 years ago which is finally, finally picking up steam like within the last month. And I'm really? getting like a thousand likes a day. It must all be coming from China. <laughs> is this but true? It, it's, I swear to God, but it's not a music video. Now, like I said, this is my, the extent of my YouTube usage. Uh, it's a video called Fat Cat Squeaks, which I held up my cat who was 10 years younger at that point. And I, while she was meowing, I kind of went, Mer. And she squeaked and are, 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 are we going to play that video? This thing is, is pumping right now. I'm getting like a thousand likes yes. like a week. So if you want to pull up fat cat squeaks, I'd have no problem with it. And okay. I think it's a 10 second video and I think everybody should, uh, <laughs> should watch this because it is pumping. And the, the, the comments that are coming in are like priceless at this point. Okay. Wait a minute. This is, this is, I just want to let you know this is amazing that this is the thing that you bring up first. Well, it wasn't. I, 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 I just got a text message from, from one of my best friends who I've played music with. He just texted me. He goes, dude, this guy's one of us. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I love it. I love it. All right, here we go. This is it. So this is Fat Cat Squeaks. Oh, let me make sure. Stand by. I got I to gotta remove sure this. Oh, loaded here. shit. Load this. Hold thing. on. You gotta load this thing up. Hold on. All right, hold on. I gotta do this again. Oh. This is hilarious. This, this is, is pretty funny because this is not. This was not my my plan. 
So this is that? so so wait a minute. So this has what like forty six thousand views, and most of it like just happened, and you posted ten years Dude, ago. Three weeks ago, it was at like twenty five. All right, everybody, share Fat Cat Squeaks. I'm gonna do it when this is over. All right, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Dude. Just to share the Facebook slash Spafford one more time. Right. right. <laughs> Dude, there it that's, is. That's uh, amazing. Yes. You, you, you just won the internet. If you're wondering how what it looks like, you just did. Right, right. So I had another video. I can't talk about this one. The, 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 the language of it was not suitable for YouTube, but it was going. So I had this like goal. That like when YouTube was really taken off, like I wanted a viral video that was going to make a, a million views. That was okay. like, that was my goal of life, you know? Yeah. And then that wasn't happening. So formed a band and jumped on the road. <laughs> 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 and right. it, it, yeah. And, and now you just do Pornhub and OnlyFans, right? Right. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> You are one of us. That's um, right. So, so yeah, you got me all sidetracked now with the whole porn up thing. I was going to go off on a tangent, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I used YouTube for, like, you know, I used it a lot for, like, instructional videos. So, like, those old school, like, REH videos that were coming out, everybody, like, kind of turned digitized them, you know, and you didn't have to watch them on VHS, which I have owned some of them. Uh, but... But you know now they're all like available for, for free on on that. I'm reading the comments now as as they're come up, coming up. Yes, dude, fantasy, you are crushing it out here with what the, is with fantasy the saying? Does he want to be responded to? He she? Well, see, because look, he I put it on the on this on the uh, on the screen. So it says yep. since 2012, you released five studio albums, seven right. live albums, and you make nearly every live show available for streaming for your dedicated fans. Talk about that. Um, yeah, I mean, like since the inception of this thing. You know, and like I get, I get this question a lot, like from young young bands and young musicians. Um, like, what do we do? You know, and and my, my answer is <laughs> basics, yeah, right. fundamentals. What do this we do? Loaded question, bro. You know, <laughs> um, I say give away the music. Yeah, give it to people. Yeah. What are you going to try and like charge everybody ten bucks to listen to like you know your first album or your first library? Give them it. You know. Uh, so when we first started this thing, like. I was still coming off of this idea that like making a manila folder with a CD booklet and uh, you know, a biography taped on the inside and like a picture of the band, like that was still going. And most of the places that I was dropping these like press kits off were like, Hey man, I have an email address and you can just email that stuff to me. And I like yeah. got offended because I put all this work into making these like manila folders, you know, but they always had a CD inside of it. And we would burn CDs just like like anybody who had a computer, like just burn the CD, burn the tracks. And like yeah. maybe some of them, like only two of the tracks burned or like there was an error message or whatever, you know. But if we played a show and it wasn't in front of a lot of people, like give them music. Yep. That then translated to going online um, with archive.org, if you're familiar with that or yep, if you totally. are, are familiar with this. You know, it was a free, you know, way to put up good quality music. They had good files up there. And we could just give it away. And that was what I think really started us on more branching out from just Prescott where we were at the time. Yeah. You know, that's actually really good advice in general, um, not just for aspiring musicians, but anybody doing really anything, but especially any type of content, whether it's audio, video, YouTube, or whatever. I mean, nothing no one's going to eventually buy anything that you do if they don't know you exist and if you don't if you don't put your stuff out there and give it out there for free to let you know to let people know who you are and what you're all about um you're never going to you're never going to have people there to support you you know it's it's just it's it's just like walking true. down the street it's like walking down the street in that in that town and the, the guys handing out like little samples of the sandwiches that's it. You, have you to. know, like take take a bite of the sandwich. I kind of like caramel. And you may go inside and buy the full thing. That's you right. know, they'll buy the music later if they like it. You know, right. and, and we're very fortunate that people 
you know, had the same, you know, ideas and ears that, that we had with, with this, you know? And they, and they separate, you know, the live show from what they're hearing in their car. You know what I mean? Even if, like, they're listening to a live show, when you come to town, they're going to spend the money because they know they're going to have a great fucking night there. You know what I mean? It's, well, that, it's, yeah. And we they're, not, they're not in competition with each other. No, no. And we attest that to the community that's been growing around us, you know, and, and the fans. I mean, we owe everything to the fans, 100%. We'd not be here without them. And it's, you know, keep it going, keep it strong because Spafford is strong. And it's, you know, the pandemic is a weird, a weird thing that none of us can really explain, but we all try. And yeah. the truth is, is that this will go away and we will come back. And us, whether we're your favorite band or another band is your favorite band, like you will be able to see them again and it will be glorious. I love your optimism. I'll take it. Sold. When you when you tour again, you come to the East Coast. I will be there. Hey man, you're coming up on stage with us, I and mean, this is uh, you know, we we love <laughs> well, they, to have, we love to have guests down in uh, down in, in Baltimore, right? Yes, I'm in Baltimore. But if you go through D.C. or anywhere in that in that area, I'll make it happen. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sold. Just All right. Yeah. Let's just don't what? Just don't fuck it up. You know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's our, I'm gonna. I'm going to do it on purpose. Yeah, right. I'm just going to get all blacked out and come up and just dive bomb all over your set. Just right. Aww. No, that's what we say to every single guest, you know, and everything's like really peachy and shit. It's like, hey, don't fuck it up. <laughs> and then let him walk on stage like right then and there. And he's like, why did they just say that? <laughs> I love it. All right. Mm. I see some super chats coming in. Um, What's a super play chat? A super chat is check this out. Bam. Deuce to Mortis just threw five bucks. And oh, by the way, everybody, uh, if you're wondering, I, Brian, we didn't even go over this. We didn't even talk about it. You're making money off of my, my mug here. Well, no, we are. Unlike unlike most most people on the internet, I split all my donations with all my guests. Oh, so, okay. I didn't even know that. that that's great. I, 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 forget, I forget more than I remember. I mean, that's how it goes. But anyhow. So Deuce to Mortis comes in with five bucks. He said, just for fun, he wants to play you soften the glare. You know who Oh, I thought are? he wanted me to turn my light down on the uh on no. my okay. No. He yeah. wants to play he wants to play you a track. Is that acceptable? Absolutely. Who is this? Is this So this, this is Deuce to Mortis? He's the man. He's a regular on Tuesdays. He usually has pretty hot picks. But uh so he wants soften the glare, apismatic, start at the last two minutes for a peak of how far their influences swing. I don't know this band. So let's pull this up here. All right. This is the fun we have. So you see, I'll start at the last two minutes. You know, that makes it difficult with the timestamp. So 437 minus 2 is 237. Wow. Making, making me do long division up here. All right, here we go. Rest.
Wow. All right, sir. You get to uh, you get to play me for a second. What the hell happened there? That was awesome, <laughs> dude. That dude. I loved the bass sound. It's like I love um, the bass player. They put him right, right front and forward there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. and those chords, those bass chords. I mean, yeah, it was some chunky shit. It was very, very chunky. Very, right. very, very chunky. I did not expect that little jazzy breakdown in the middle there. Yeah, a little unsuspecting, but, you know, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. You ready for another one? Sure. Yeah, let's. let's and then let's we'll and then we'll maybe take some questions and and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, Tom, Tom, thank you for the 10 spot. Really appreciate it. And guys, remember, if you just are tuning in, uh, we got Brian from Spafford with us. I do split all my donations with my guests. We're taking requests. We're uh, asking questions. You know, we're trying to make him feel a little uncomfortable. So here we go. He says, this is great. What is a jam and yet not a jam? Try porcupine tree anesthetized Tilburg. Whatever the hell that means. Are you familiar with what I'm about to type in? No. No. I, I Sometimes I don't even know what a jam is or isn't. So. Uh, I understand, sir. You know, none of, none of these words... None of these words should go together. Porcupine, tree, <laughs> anesthetize, Tilburg. Anesthetize. Yeah, I can't even believe I got that right. I'm assuming I got it right. I was. I shouldn't even tried. I mean, right? All right, here we go. Let's put this in the thing. Add to stream. Okay. There is no. Oh. There is no time. There's no timestamp. Yeah, we get any timestamps, Tom? Dude, Tom, come on, come on, Tom. We like time. We generally do about two minutes a, a tune. Tom, thanks for the donation. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Man. Not a jam. To think of definitely not a jam. No, it was it was cool though. It reminded me of of something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Like it's like it's like it's like a, it's like a Radiohead ish world. Yeah, they were from yeah. the Netherlands. Then maybe is that or is it just live from the Netherlands? N oh yeah, that's what Tilburg is. Tilburg is a city in the Netherlands. Didn't know. Oh, that. I thought just that that, was that part of the band's name there. So did I. I mean, how could you tell? I mean, the first three words didn't go together. Porcupine tree. Anesthetize. Thank you. Yeah. Dark, Dark A Live. Thank you for the 20. Super generous. Oh. Really appreciate it. it. Says, thanks yeah. for the treat on this day. How about that? You are that? very, very welcome. How about All that? All right. I want you to share one with us. Come on. Give us, give us, what are you listening to these days? What's, what's, what's grinding your gears? What's keeping the blood flowing? What's, you making know, I, you wanna, what's making you want to pick the thing up and get better? <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe take like a left turn with this whole thing. I love it. And we you might know. have to get to the four minute mark for this to really like take shape. So I, Dude, I, this is, this is, this is your show. 
This is I your show. Since, since I'm the guest here, I can. Uh... Oh you, God! You you can do whatever you want. Do you, now. You can share us. Actually, you know what? If in the private chat, if you just want to drop me the link, yeah, I'm sending you the link. We got a private chat here. You've been saying some pretty, pretty dirty stuff this whole time, but uh, here, coming at you. Look at this. Look at this. All right. All right. There's something I want to preface with this, though. Preface there's, away. There's foul being language. On, being on stage is 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 a language, okay. and. It's an experience that I have been very fortunate to experience many, 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 many times. Right. And one of the best, one of the best experiences that you can have on stage is bringing a guest up yeah. because you have no idea what's really going to happen. And sometimes you may rehearse it and sometimes you might not. Um, but there's something I really respect about like, like, holy shit, like, this guy's playing with them right now. Like there's just something so cool about that. You know, I'm like, they're friends. Like I didn't know that they were friends. Like yeah, what the yeah. conversations like, what is this? So this is something that I stumbled across a long time ago. And I think is fucking awesome because I have been on both sides of this. I have been the guest and I have been, you know, in the band with the guest when maybe the guest doesn't really know what song you're playing. Yeah. Totally. So how are you going to pull this off? Yeah. And let me tell you, Pete Townsend with the Grateful Dead, if this is how you pull this off. And let's watch this video. You got, we got to probably make it to about the four, four minute mark, right? This is what I assume happened. Jerry is like, hey, man, like just come up for Warfrat. Simple as song that we know. There's a couple chords. You can't fuck it up. Yeah. Just come up yeah. there and look cool and have fun. Yeah. And Bob Weir was more like, don't, don't fuck it up. <laughs> you know, I, you know, like I know what's my, you know, state of mind Pete is in right now. Like I got to give him a little help. So in this video, you see Jerry like doing his own thing. He doesn't give a shit about what's happening behind him, but behind him, you got Bob Weir who's like trying to tell Pete, like which chords are coming up next. And Pete doesn't really fucking give a shit. And <laughs> at some point, we're gonna have to like point this out. At some point, yes. Bob is like, stop playing. So this is like this thing where like where I'm like, yeah, come up for this song. Like, like it's super easy. There's only a couple chords. And then all of a sudden you start playing it and you realize what part is coming next. And you're like, holy shit, like if he doesn't, if he doesn't stop right now, like this could be a train wreck. So sometimes <laughs> you, always, you always have to look at the guest and be like, just stop playing because something is about to happen that you are not ready for. And like, this is going to take a huge turn. So that happens in here. And Bob's like kind of yells at Pete. You see, it seems he's like, dude, shut up. And Pete turns into the rock star that we all know and love and does this dance move that for me is like my spirit animal. This dude. dance move is like, everything to me this so, is the best intro of all time i i had to preface this video on what i felt watching this and um and i watched it again this morning for for reference and like it did the same thing it did to me when i first watched it it is so fucking cool yes. this is how you become a rock star and this is how when you jump on stage with a band and you don't know the song this is how you get through it dude this this whole Fucking thing, I might, I, I might I might have to cut it into its own video. Roll there tape. We I only have one video here. Yeah. But this is this is the video. All right. So more I I will go until Soothing. you start until you start waving and you want to talk. Okay. 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 But you got to keep your eye on Pete. All right. Who's just fucking smoking? So he doesn't know what he's doing. So he's just gonna light up a couple cigarettes and he's gonna stand there and just be cool. And he yeah. just. Kills it. Boom. We're getting in. There we go. Now we're in work. All attitude cards. Death. Jerry's voice was like this. This is when this is when you would cry listening yeah. to Jerry's voice. 
All right, watch how concerned Bob Weir is here. Staying close to Pete. Finish it down. Tell me the chords, man. Yeah. I got you. I got you. E minor. Hey. Kira. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. E minor. Okay. Oh, he might have hit an E minor there. Someone did. <laughs> Stepping out a little bit there. finale here so we're peach just lighting cigarettes he, he... yeah he is he's just smoking back there no bob says dude stop he just told him shh don't do anything watch this move right here rock star boom In three minutes. He's faking it. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, the best part about this is that Phil seems to really pick up on that energy here. Yeah. Right? So uh, Phil starts to go a little go a little mad here.
I think that, that's... Dude, that... That made my... That made my week. We need... You know what? We what need to that? do... We, we need to do a series. And it needs to be you. We need to do a series where, like, maybe once a month or every couple weeks, we come out with a video where we point out shit like that that no one's paying attention to. Dude, absolutely. Dude, like, Mystery Science Theater... Right, exactly. It's like my favorite. That's the, that's my jam, man. And I would love to do that. Exactly. But if we could turn us into little robot characters. That would be oh, great, dude. Yeah. Oh, it'd be that. There's so many things like that. Right. Like I remember this. That there's there's one where uh, on the on the P Funk Earth tour uh, during Bernie Worrell's solo, uh, like when they're in I forget what city they're in and the camera guy somehow switches the camera to like where like his face is in green next to the uh next to bernie's and bernie's wearing this big crazy hat and he does this you know i gotta just try. i don't know if i could find yeah, this. I, don't right. know what, I don't i don't this, i don't know what tune series it's is in. starting right now but it's but it's 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 really good right. um well either you find was, it right now or you save it and we do it another day Okay, Next time do this I might, I'm, I might, I might look for it while I uh, take a question. You want to take a question? I'd love to take a question. I love. All right, that. moderators out there, you see any good questions? I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Here's a super chat from M Dicey Twenty Two. Says, "Yo, Brian, Mikey D here. I know I've asked you before, but what's what the name Mikey? of the book?" What's the name of the bug you're squishing when you make the transition into the ETS jam? You have any idea what the hell he's talking about? What's the name of the bug I'm squishing? I think he means the pedal. Oh. When you go to the ETS jam. The bug? And he is calls that... it a bug. I don't know. I feel like this is a like some secret Knights Templar sort of like message. What is he There's referring to? I don't know. Is there I... even an ETS jam? Yeah, That's there's an ETS man. Yeah. Okay. So but, he's, what, so he's, but the bug. You don't have a special triple octave pedal that you hit? No. No. I mean, uh, you know, my, my stacks of, of overdrive is a is a BB preamp, a TS9, and a Wampler Ego compressor. Yo, Brian, Mike D here. I know I've asked you before, but what's the name of the bug you're squishing when you make yeah. the transition to the ETS channel? See, I'm not making that stuff up. That's an actual question with $5.55 attached to it. $5.55 question. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like it's worth a good answer. Mikey, if you're listening still, can you, <laughs> can you what, am I getting this wrong? Um, but yeah, the, the overdrives is, is the BB preamp and the TS9. And the bug... I mean, I squish all the bugs, man. Hit all the buttons, back up, dime it. Yeah, just like fucking smash it. You know, like the beauty of being in the band is like just kind of hit hit it different this time if you feel like hitting it different. That's right. That's sometimes right. it works and sometimes sometimes <laughs> you just never listen to that track ever again. <laughs> and hit it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Aerialist with a 20. Super generous. Thank you. Said wow. just listen to some Spafford. Thanks for the introduction. Hope to see you live someday. See, that's what it's all about, man. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Aerialist. Aerialist. All <laughs> right. Let's see if we can find another. Yeah, let's uh, get some, some more questions here. That's, let's see if we can get some more questions. Come on, Mods. Question, what, you, what, you, what you got? What you got? What you got? Mike, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, we might be able to do a little Tangled Up in Blue here in a minute. Let's uh, let's uh, look. Look, now he's got the timestamp. You know, hey, we got timestamps. We like timestamps on the show. Yeah, yeah, we do. All right, hold on. Let's see here. Um, now he didn't give me a year, but we're just gonna go with the first one. Timestamp three forty-five. So now we're gonna let this play for a minute here, and then mods. Let's see if we can't find a good question while we let this play. <laughs> Chili with beans or without? No bean. No, not a bean guy. Huh? Not a bean guy. Mm, mm, mm. 
What do you think of the Sabres reverse retro jersey? <laughs> uh, They're calling that the retro. All right, jersey. here's a good one. Love the retro. Why no? Why no permanent yeah. horn section, dude? You're too expensive, dude. You're already bringing nine people out. There's only four people in the band. You're not trying to save any money. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, maybe be beware. Jason Singer asks, "Why no permanent horn section?" Jason Singer is a good friend of ours who. Um, it's actually a funny story how we act. You want to hear a funny story, but um, I would, I would love to hear a funny story. We'll bring. It's all about it's all about the stories, you know. Dude, you know what? It's story time. We'll bring Jerry back in a second. Jerry's coming back. All right, hit hit me. 2017, Chicago, right mm -hmm. in the city mm -hmm. somewhere. I'm not really sure. I don't know the lay of the land too well, but I knew where the grocery store was. We knew where we were sleeping, and we knew where the studio was, and that's all we needed. We had two weeks to record an album. We're recording our song, Ain't That Wrong. And uh, while we're recording it, the jam came up and there was like too many options for what we were thinking was going to happen in this in this section. We had too many options and like none of them were working. Was it going to be a guitar solo? Was it going to be like a synth solo? Was it going to be like this? Like, you know, we were trying some stuff and like nobody was really feeling it. So we just took like a little bit of a break. Um, I think I was, you know, we were in there for quite a while at this point, you know, and this was 2017. So things in the, in the, in the band, uh, was a little different back then, you know, and I, I took some time for myself to go outside out front and I'm sitting there smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And I see this man walking down the street and he's walking the cutest goddamn dog I've ever seen in my entire life. Now I'm not one to be the guy to be like, Hey, that's a cute dog. Like, can I pet him? You know, because I find that to be like kind of weird. The people that just want to pet other people's dogs, you know, like it's off this, dog, this dog probably doesn't want to be pet by strangers. And like you're screwing up all the training that we're putting into it, you know, yeah, yeah. You're supposed to bark at people like you. Yeah. So anyway, this guy's walking down the street. He's a nice little stroll. And I'm telling you, this is the cutest goddamn dog you will ever <laughs> see in your entire <laughs> life. Okay. And I'm sitting there, I'm smoking my cigarette, and I'm just feeling like kind of down. And I have a cat at home, and I was missing my cat. And... Hey, bud, you mind if I paint your dog real quick? That's a really cute dog. I, I just pet him. And he was like, yeah, of course, you know? So I'm like, all right. So I'm petting the dog, and the guy looks at me, and he goes, so what are you doing in there? And we're in like somewhat of like a residential area. Like this was a one story building and there was like apartments that were built up next to it. Up to this point, this studio no longer exists anymore. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, it's, it's been, uh, you know, broken down and, and turned into apartment buildings. Right. So, so this guy's like, what are you doing in there? And I'm like, Oh, well, this is actually like a recording studio and we're recording. And he's like, uh, yeah, I know it's a recording studio. I'm a musician. And I'm like, oh, like, what, what do you play? And he's like, I play, I play, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how about, how about this one from Ween? Right. We have epic story, lame questions. That's the damn guy's most epic lame from a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so basically, the guy's like, yeah, I know it's a recording studio in there. I'm a local musician. And I'm like, really, what do you play? And he's like, I play saxophone. And I'm like, in my mind, within one millisecond, I'm like, we got to get this guy to record over this section of this <laughs> oh, song. Oh, you're coming in with your dog. <laughs> right. So I was like, look, man, I don't have time for this. How good are you? And he's like, well, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I'm pretty <laughs> fucking good. And I play, I'm the leader in like this band and this band and, you know, like the nubile things and like all this stuff. Right. Uh -huh. And I'm like, I got, I, I, we got no other options. Like, dude, how far do you live? And he's like, I live right there. And I'm like, <laughs> grab your sacks, meet me right here in five minutes. And I'm going to give you three passes over this, over this tune. He's like, got it. He's like, dude, I'm walking my fucking dog. I live right here. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, I so got all my runs, shit right there. Right. So he runs inside, comes back with his horn, left the dog at home. Oh, dog's name is the dog's name is Dewey. Cutest fucking dog you'll ever see. Um, <laughs> Jason comes in. We meet Jason. His name is Jason Singer. He comes in and blows three passes. Oh, uh, there he is. I was much more humble than that. My ass, if you knew him. He's like, I'm really fucking good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You thought lead guitar players were bad. Oh, uh, nothing like horn players. Right. Um, yeah. So, anyway, he came in three passes, and we wound up taking one of those takes and kept it on the album mm. for, for, for Ain't That Wrong on our album for Amusement Only that was recorded in Chicago. Stayed friends with Jason through this whole period of time. There's a much deeper story. Apparently his brother worked with my father many, 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 many years ago in, in New York City. And how this relationship had come full circle basically is like so wild. And we've known each other from, from, from other lives basically. Um, but we've taken Jason, we've had him come up basically every time we come to Chicago. And, uh, yeah. and for Jason's birthday, we brought him out to, uh, to Red Rocks with his brothers and, uh, and, and played Red Rocks with him in Colorado, which was freaking Dude. awesome. Yeah. It was pretty epic. That I love stories like that. And yeah. I love that he's in this chat. He's awesome. Awesome man, Jason, you know, we love you so much and, uh, appreciate everything from, from his end. We just released a, a live album, live volume three, which, um, has him on one of the more newer songs that I've, I've released, um, lately gold glittered hat and and he's got a uh he's playing the sax on that from the uh, thalia hall in chicago dude yeah awesome dude. Killer. killer story that um i uh totally different kind of story but similar i was in new orleans one time and uh and uh this was i don't know it was certainly post katrina but i'm at some i'm at some bar on frenchman street I'm at the back of the bar. By the way, Dustin Claypool, thank you for the 15. Super generous. Thank you, and, Dustin. And Kevin, I see yours for 25. Super generous. Big says, Kevin, thank has, you, brother. Has Peanut put the co put put on the COVID 15? It's the COVID 19. It's the COVID 19. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so yeah. I'm in so, so so I'm in this I'm in this bar in New Orleans, and and uh, <clears throat> I'm at the back of the bar. There's a band playing up front. Great gypsy jazz band, you know, just like you would find on Frenchman. And and this 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 old dude comes, this old white dude, big white beard, comes to the back of the bar, puts his horn, he's got a little trumpet, puts it right on the bar, sits next to me, orders a shot, you know, just like a shot of like rail bourbon and, and a bud heavy bottle, right? Slams the shot, sips his beer, you know. I have one with him. One or two tunes goes by. Yours another shot. Another beer. Another one or two tunes go by. Like third round. Or is another shot. Another one or two beers. Doesn't say shit to the band. Doesn't even really acknowledge the bartender too much. Just kind of like this really wicked scowl. And then just out of nowhere in the middle of like one of the verses of one of these tunes just leans back and these are when you could you could smoke in the bar leans back <clears throat> finishes his smoke puts it out on the bar picks up his horn and starts playing but exhales through the horn right it doesn't exhale the smoke on the side and then start playing it exhales through the horn picks up the melody on the verse like right in the middle of it the guy in the band stops, right, who was, who was doing the melody line, blows for like three or four minutes, and then just walks the fuck out. Wow. Doesn't pay his bill, just, just like, like he's done it a hundred times. For someone yeah. like me who didn't know who he, I still don't know who he is, but wow. obviously he's one of those like New Orleans legends. Yeah, but it, just, yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of that, um, you know, where it's just like, you, you never know who's right next to you. Yeah, absolutely. I love those. Walking stories. down the street, just walking their dog down the street. That's it. The cutest dog ever. Cutest dog ever. Dewey. 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else we have here. 
Oh my God! Hold on a second. Stand by. What, what's Stand going on? I feel like I'm missing out on all the action. Look at this. There. Look at this. Fish in the flesh just threw a Hondo. Dude, cheers! Fantastic partnership. What's your all time your favorite all time crickets, Brian? Holy Dude, shit. super generous. Sincerely appreciate that. Dude, you guys are the best. At, the people that are on here all the time hear yeah. me say this all the time. But, dude, this is such an amazing community. And just, like, I'm always blown away by the generosity and the support. So, just, that Fishman, is. thank you so much. Thank dude, you. Take it away, Brian. Um, so, well, it's funny. Man. There, there's a Crickets here somewhere. I just got to scour. Let me let me scour just, just real quick, if you don't mind. Do it. Oh. Ah. <laughs> My instructional videos is showing up here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. But there is an old video of of biscuits um and I was hoping not to talk about the disco biscuits here, but oh no, I think it's right here. You were hope you were yeah, hoping so not to. Yes, yes. So it's twelve twenty nine oh one, I believe, from the I'm Roseland Ballroom. And there's a video oh. here. I'm going to send you the link. Yeah, we, link me up. The two to a Hondo at you. You got to link me up. You got to link me up. I'm linking you. Sorry, it was just it was just playing there. Um, and 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 these videos, I believe, don't are just. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. You know, Daniel. Daniel, super generous. Really appreciate it. All right, copy link address. What is this? What is this? All right, now listen. This has seventy nine views. You sure no. you want to do this? <sighs> this might not be the more right one. You have a timestamp. You, you, D Daniel Dalton just jumped in. He's got a hot sauce company called Green Tape Hot Sauce. Really? Let me tell you, this when you you know when you taste something like this from tell from us. someone, and plug, it's so plug, spot baby, on. Plug, plug. You know, it's just like, <laughs> what do what do we have in common here? Because this is what I think it should taste like too, and it's like, you know, it's just a brilliant a brilliant thing when you when you when you got people who got. A product like that, you know. I guess that's what happens with music, you know. It's like they're playing it. And you're like, that, that's what I was thinking. That's what I would have done too, you know. Um, like they're telling you to drink. Drink, drink what? <laughs> I got my. Uh, what is the hot sauce company? It's called Green Tape Hot Sauce. Okay, all right. Um, this is uh, <laughs> I'm like fucking... now they want a hot sauce story. See, look, you've opened the floodgates, dude. Um. The only hot sauce story that I have. Oh, look at wow. look at, look at, look at Billy. You got you got Billy all hot and bothered. Look, look, Billy you can't even get going. Can't type. You can't type for anything. <laughs> the hot sauce story is when we travel, when we're on tour, we travel to every single city. And on our rider, we ask for a bottle of hot sauce, preferably like something like local. And I believe on our rider it does say the hotter the better. Um, and unfortunately, some people will there it is, green tea hot sauce. Um, unfortunately, some people will show up with like Louisiana hot sauce or like, I don't think we've ever gotten Frank's. That would be, yeah, we no, get that anywhere, you know, you we want the it. local shit, you know, yeah, you can't do Frank's. And, and I think word, word had gotten out because we've done a lot of Instagram videos about it and all this stuff. And basically, um, Daniel had met us at the Bijou theater, um, mm -hmm. in, uh, and I always get the city wrong for some reason. Um, I always think it's Nashville, but I know it's not Nashville. Someone help me out here. Um, Knoxville and uh, and he showed out at the, at the beginning of the show and and gave us all a whole bunch of hot sauce and we hooked up with him and um, he's been you know helping me kind of grow my avocado plant that I got going on downstairs and he's just an awesome awesome supporter awesome fan and I love his stuff so um, well, now they want you to play steak sauce I don't know how to play steak sauce <laughs> I don't know. we haven't even right. played any music here uh, I, uh, that's, that's all I got. All right. 
All right, so are, are we are we playing this biscuits for him, or are we moving on? I think we're moving on. Okay, it is it is your show, and I love this. I think we're moving on only because I don't think that that's the real one. But what I'm looking for is that there was a video that I used to jump on and, and watch, and it is it might even be from like '97. No, I love I love Frank's. I got to tell you, I love. Frank's. <laughs> Uh, I use it. I make hot sauce. I've been making wings once a week for the last eight years with my wife. Um, really? Yeah. We started from the, from baking and then we've done, you know, everything. And now we got an air fryer and it took a little while to figure it out, but I have fucking figured this thing out and I love an air fryer. You don't have one, buy an air fryer and make some wings in that bad boy. You won't be disappointed. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still on the old, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm into these days. I'm into, I'm into the, the old school Weber, and then you build with with not like you know bullshit charcoal, but like actual good charcoal. But then building yeah. a pyramid, yeah. on the top, yeah. and then stacking on the outside, yeah. and then and then TP wood in there, and then just smoking that. Those are the best wings I've ever come up with. And then putting, like the sauce in a pan, or, or what I really like to do is you know getting like a thing of baked beans and taking the wrapper off so it doesn't catch fire and putting that right in the middle there towards oh. the end and timing it right. But wow. I've never done the air fryer. Well, I mean, you know, the only difference is that yours takes fucking two days to eat. Yes. And I'm, I'm eating mine in 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, you know, I have I have four kids. I have all the time in the world, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Get an air oh, fryer. Yeah, get an air fryer. Right. All right, so... You're right. We haven't played anything. We have. Will you, will, you, will you share with us something that you're working on guitar wise or maybe a new a tune or new anything? You, you, yeah, you, it's, it's your world, dude. It's funny. And, and, and this, you know, this whole thing is just coming back full circle, full circle yeah. here. So I kind of may have written a song no. based around meeting Jason and the experience with with him in Chicago. It's, no. it's loosely based on 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 him, and and on him and, and Dewey and, and the whole the whole nine yards there, um, which is really fun. And and the band and I like you know we've been sitting here in quarantine and we have our studio and we've like turned majority of it into like recording studio and rehearsal studio and um, you know it's who's this? Well, now I have to know why were you hoping to avoid the biscuits? Not very. <laughs> Before, or, <laughs> um, you no, know, I just, uh, I just, um, there's a lot to talk about there. You know, it's been the whole show so, talking, talking about that. All right, but, they want you to play. They want you okay, to play. yeah. So, thank you for the um, donation. I love, by the way. I love the biscuits and I love all the guys in the band. They're the fucking greatest bunch of guys I've ever had. That you know, it's a really cool experience to be 15, 16 years old, you know, growing up on this music. And then all of a sudden, like friends. 28, they're your friends and you're texting these guys and Magner's fucking sending you funny ass fucking pictures of him in a Spafford koozie. Um, which I, don't, I told him to post it on Instagram. He, had, he didn't post it on Instagram, but this is a hilarious picture um, that I just got. And it's like, it's such a beautiful relationship to have with these guys, you know, uh, and they are so humble. They are so cool, uh, yeah. you know, and it just makes sense on why I fell in love with their music to begin with. You know, um, so anyway, so back to this song that I that I that I wrote. Um, the idea of this tune was to kind of was to kind of put. Um, you got to stop flashing the comments because I keep <laughs> seeing these comments and they're making me giggle. Um, so a lot of the jams that we do and a lot of the songs, at least for me, like the song writing process was like the way I looked at some songs was like, all right, let's get through this composition. Let's get through like all these like peaks and valleys and and these rivers and the mud and like all this shit, you know, and, yeah. and then finally we can get to this jam, which, which winds up being like a, you know, a one chord jam that can go anywhere. And it has like, you know, all the possibilities are, are endless for something like that, or, you know, or a two chord, a three chord, a four chord or something like that. But something that, you know, maybe a little modal or something, you know? Um, and for me, that's like, that's my wheelhouse. I really like closing my eyes and just, doing this like not having to think uh i reach a point where like i am completely disconnected from what i think i know about music and what my fingers are doing and there's no wrong notes because if i land on a wrong note 
I can easily turn that into the beginning of the next phrase and I, and I can end it so that it actually sounded like a right note, okay? And that's- Skill in itself. Right, and that's like my style. And I'm, I, I, I am all over the place sometimes. And it's, you know, like the, what's going on up here is not translating to here, but I'll listen back and be like, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool, you know? Or sometimes I don't like it at all, but I'm not too critical on that. But where I'm at is I wanted to put together a jam section that was a little more difficult, that had a little bit more um, non-modal like changes into it, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, so that's what I've been working on, and, and me and the guys have been kind of like working on this on this tune. Um, so I had kind of like the the jam section, which is these like dominant chords, just moving within these dominant chords, and it's it's very difficult to play. And here I am, I'm like, yeah, I could write this thing, you know? And I'm like, holy shit, but I'm having like somewhat of a hard time getting yeah. through it, you know? Uh, there's a it. lot of ideas, there's a lot of possibilities or something like it. So I think I can just go ahead and smash my guitar into my microphone there. Um, I think I can go ahead and just kind of get this loop kind of going and, and yeah, give it a shot. See, if and I can, see, uh... see what it sounds like. I, I feel like I'm not warmed up anymore because we've just been yapping the whole time, but... Um, where'd you go? Here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you up. So if you're, well, yeah, I can make you, yeah, we'll do it like this. We'll see how it goes. I wanted, I wanted to make you big and me small, but it's not, oh, okay. it's not, it's not allowing me. All right. We'll do it. There we go. Yeah. 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 I like right. it. Whatever. I can make me a little bigger with the, with the thing. So, um, so basically it's, it's four bars of, of B7 for all those mm. listeners. Four, four bars of B9, basically, right? Um, oh, my gosh. You're nining it. Right. And then two bars of, of D7. And then two oh, bars of E7. And then the second part, like part B of it, is uh, two bars of B7, two dar bars of D7, two bars of E7, and then two bars of F sharp 7. Or mm -hmm. nine, bars, whatever you want, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so it became... So here, I'll play it for you. So four bars yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. We'll put, we'll do it. So, so it loops every eight bars, basically. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. How many of you can hear this? D seven. Part B. Move. And now we're at the F sharp set. Where'd you go? Where'd your volume go? I don't know. Am I here? Yeah, there you go. Oh, I just wasn't saying anything. Dude, I um, love that. I'm so glad people got to see you play guitar. That's a really... I wish I had a looper set up. I think... Look, this is like my best friend. You know? It really yeah. it really is. And I, I was actually watching your video earlier today. Um, you know, and you were doing a lot of the chromatic stuff. And like... Yeah. 
you know, that's, that's, you know, I've spent so much time with just a metronome and, and working on some stuff like that just to get my fingers moving. Um, you know, yeah. but the, the, the looper, I, I picked up this looper. It's called the new X looper. It's like $99. It's far better than anything bosses come out with for a better price point. And it has 99 saves in it. Right. And, um, yeah. During quarantine, I've, I've, I've all ninety nine presets are already saved with new material that I've been like working on. So I'll just like write a progression or work on something like that, you know, something really cool, and lay it down here. And ninety nine presets later, now I have to get a new device, basically. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a getting a looper is a really important thing for everybody too because you, you have to work on the rhythm parts too. And it's gotta and it's gotta be tight. So like, if you come up with a cool little rhythm part, figuring yeah. out how to solo over that, you know, instead of someone else's track, is pretty cool. Those are fun changes, man. You know what I mean? Because like you're moving a dominant chord up a, a, a minor third. Well, yeah. that stuff dude oh cool man yeah that sounds great where do we want to do now I, you're 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 the lead, <laughs> all the leader right all right is, is there any I'll other questions you, or, or, there's, or is, there's 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 lots of questions here let's there, you uh, have what's the looper called, called again it's called new x so n u dash x and it's yellow thing. It's called the loop Vandy. cord. My wife is a built-in loober. Uh, Unsavory, no. sir. Unsavory. Yeah, you know, working on just something like super simple. If you want to work on, you know, the looper is just really puts puts it all together. You know, I gotta just delete this, but it, I it, love that track, dude. That's that's a so now so wait a minute. So that's a that's a jam section of a tune that you yeah. wrote about yeah. the guy that played the sax solo, loosely based around Jason Singer and and Doobie. Yes, I can't wait for that to come out. All right, all right, let's play something else for you. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna let you choose. So we have a lot of super chats in here, and uh, I'm going to what's read. A su what's a super chat? Am I the super chat the is the donation. Oh. So, so it's the it's the it's when you see the dollar amount attached to the question here. Wow! So we so, should probably focus on the super chatters, right? Uh, yes. But again, since so when I run these myself, I try my damnedest to do all the super chatters. But sometimes these run like hours and hours and hours. I don't sure. do that to guests. So I let I let my guests pick and choose. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read you some of their requests, and I'll let you stop me when you're like that one. Okay. 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 So, uh, all right. Spar comes in with a five. Thank you so much. Says, "Hey Brian, big fan and guitar player. Who are your top three influ three influences and why? Who who are your, who are your big three that got you going? Man, it's so it's so hard. It changes and it has changed throughout the years, but always." It just has, you know. I mean, in I the beginning, move. in the beginning, who made you pick it up? Jimmy Page. Yeah. I, I mean, really, like Zeppelin was just the coolest fucking thing ever. Houses of the Holy was the first cassette I ever had. Just what? Yeah, it's just so cool. Um, and then that evolved, you know. And then I saw yeah. a, a Led Zeppelin cover band, and then I, I fell out of love. <laughs> All right, Jeff Stewart with the 20. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Wharf Rat Joe, thank you. Says, can't wait to see Spafford in SoCal again. Hey, Joe. Um, Cody says, please confirm you're selling T-shirts with weasels on them. Better stock up on those. It's almost Christmas. Oh, right. Yeah, check uh, check the website. Yeah. Ben Robinson. Blakely Kane, thank you so much. Yeah, man, I'm ready to hang at Nam. Uh, thanks for doing this. Ask Brian if he's considering covering "Clubbing" by Thomas Blug or Blug. 
You know what the hell that is? I don't. Let's maybe we should listen to it. All right, let's pull it up. I don't know what the hell that is, but Blaze Stafford is his Blaise name. Blaze Stafford. Blaze wow. Stafford. Imagine Stop that. Blaise. All right, let's bring this up. What the is this hell is this is a question from Blaze, Mr. Blaze himself? That's 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 what they, that's what they say. Now I don't know what the hell this is. All right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> you know this? I do. <laughs> I do. Is there some joke I don't know about? No, I don't know. It's just funny because there's so much music out there, and there's, you know, there's so many people that just kick ass, and this, this guy's definitely one of them. There like, are I've so many heard, people that kick ass out there. I've never heard of this guy ever before. Oh, yeah. Like, who's this band? This band is just incredible. Oh, I love the comic head back there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. This guy's got Jenkos on, man. Never seen this before. You're making it look too easy, bro. Yeah, dude. Unfamiliar with that dude. I feel like we're riding in Miami with the top down and the eighties, man. Just going going clubbing. What else are we doing? All right, next up here, Dustin Claypool. Thank you for the donation. Jarrett Kagan, thank you. Yes, hey, I realized I, I realized the Ravens lost to the Pats. Thanks for reminding me, dickhead. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> he throws a super chat at it just to just to make sure I see it. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um oh. Chris Nakamura, thank you for the donation. He says, Brian, I've been transcribing spaff tunes, to try to get my chops in my ear up. Gotten through ETS and ain't that wrong. What should I hit next? Postman. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Tell me Tell me uh, how it goes. I mean, well yeah, you know, that's that's one of the harder ones. Matthew Swanson comes in and says, what's your favorite festival to play, but also to venture out into, to become a part of? Um, Electric Forest was most certainly Feisty. one of those places that uh, you can't explain unless you've ever been there. Um, same goes to, to with, with Halloween. Um, there's nothing like Sewanee. And... Uh, yeah, but my, my favorite festival, I mean, those are clearly my, my favorite festivals to play as well. They're just beautiful places, and they, you know, create all those stages, like in the middle of the forest and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's just the coolest thing, the lights and the people and the, you know. God, I miss it. I really do. <laughs> I really, I really do. Yeah. Um, it's nice to walk up in those, in those, in those you know, and just be part of the crowd, you know? Um, it has been a minute for me. I would... I, I'm itching. I'm, I'm rearing to go. We gotta go. We'll take you. You know, Peach Music Festival is also one of the greatest festivals. Yeah, and that, that's right near me. That's Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you. You're coming with me next time. We'll, we'll... Sold. Okay. Okay. Sold. Okay. Sold. It's, it's on the big... calendar. Whenever they announce it. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, we had to cancel this year, but that would have been something special. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much. Some soup for the mods. Love it. Salute for the mods. Uh, all right. Jackson, Jackson Brown asks, he says, hope you're well. Says David, David Grissom or Derek Trucks and why? That's not fair. No, I don't think that's fair. Um, Derek Trucks, I'd have to say. Is that Jackson Brown? Is that, I feel like that's one of my old students. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well. Yeah, he was just a young dude when I was teaching him, but I feel like he's kind of old now. Mm, 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 mm. I actually right. had a student reach out to me um, that I taught when he was like maybe four or five years old. And I used that's to teach him. awesome. And so how much, taught- how much teaching? Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? No, I just saying he 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 reached out to me on Instagram and was like, dude, I'm uh, and I forget his name. Uh, you know, it was a long time ago. He's like, I'm you know this kid, and I'm like, holy shit. He's like, yeah, I'm fucking seventeen now, and I'm like, oh my god. And he's like, and I'm still playing guitars, and I'm like, dude, you love Queen, and all you wanted to learn was Queen songs, and this kid was five years old, dude. Dude, my my oldest son, all he, Queen is definitely his favorite band. He's all into Queen. I don't know what it is. It's they awesome. hit it. They hit yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, they really did. So, so before we take this question from Ben, hey, thanks, Ben. Yeah. Um, so, how much teaching do you do? Or is, is is teaching a big part of your background? I know you're doing a lot of it. You know, right now during COVID, doing a lot of Skype lessons. Yeah, when I when I was like just you know getting when I was getting set up. Back in the day, you know, nobody, I never really wanted to have like a real job. And I, you know, I've had plenty of real jobs, but say it ain't so. Right. But when I like realized that I could teach music, you know, right. right. Um, but I'm not really that good with the younger students. I'm just not good. The, the ones that really don't have like a good um, attention span, like we just don't really like mix. So um, I like to deal with like older students um, if I had a preference. But back then, yeah, I was teaching like a lot of kids. I was working at like a, a dance studio that also had like a music program. Did you um, do was, dance instruction too? Yeah, right. I was working out of the local shop and I was working out of my home doing like lessons and I was just bouncing around. And I never really understood how to like schedule anyone because I was literally scheduled like a one thirty and a 2 o'clock. But I had to drive five minutes to get from one to the other and I would always be late for the next lesson. Right. Um and either way, the band when the band took off, and I was very fortunate to be able to, you know, have to leave all that. Um, you know, that was that was okay. But when I, yeah, the pandemic hit, and I and I sent out a message and was like, hey, like I'm, I'm doing some lessons, and I had a bunch of people that were interested, and one of them was actually one of my favorite students, um, Drew Althoff from Prescott, many many years ago, mm-hmm. and was able to teach him again for the next. You know, I, I, we, we hung out for the next the last six months, you know, doing lessons again. And I picked up a whole bunch that's of awesome. other students. Yeah. And they're and they're and they're all awesome. And, you know, some people come in and out and that's that's fine. Uh, you know, but I also take lessons, too. I, I, I always take lessons. Yeah. You, I hear you, man. You got to keep it. You got to keep it coming in. Right. Um, Jeff Stewart just asked in the chat, you have any openings for lessons and how do people get in touch with you for that? If you have any. <laughs> This changes on like a week to week basis, but I just I just don't really have an answer right now. I don't have an answer for that. Where would one get updates on when you may have an answer? Is I it possible? This, this is as good as ever, you know. <laughs> you come to the show and find out when, when there may be a lesson open. <laughs> you know, you just gotta just hit me up on any socials, you know, hit me up Jersey Moss on, on Instagram or hit me up at on Facebook or anything like that. And I'll try my best to answer as soon as possible. And if something happens, it happens. Um, it's usually the people that kind of keep knocking on the door, the ones that eventually get the lesson. So yep. Um, yep. it's not that I don't want to, I just have a lot of things going on, believe it or not. And, um, you know, we just, it works when it works. So I hear you. Yeah. Well, here, let's take Ben's question here. He yes. came with a 15. Thanks so much. He, Love wants to it. Know about, he wants to know about bringing cam back, rocking the two drummer setup. I mean, I, I'm not sure about back full time, but I've definitely considered having Cam and Nick play, you know, both drums behind the kit for a you know, song or a show or something. I mean, why not? That would be, it would be awesome. So. Love it. All right. Starwind. Thanks for the donation. 
you feel like talking about the dead or maybe how psychedelics may have influenced your music and life? You feel like you feel like going down that rabbit hole? I mean, yeah, I don't do any of that anymore. Um, <laughs> Me neither. You know? A time um, and a place. A time and a yeah, place. Yeah, like whatever, you know? This, it's, it's, you know, everyone's done it, man. Um, no, nah, you know, I, I dabbled in my this and that and, and had fun with it and had more fun without it. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's kind of where I, I, I choose to be. But, um, yeah, The Grateful Dead, I found them really, really young. I I forget when the Dick's Picks came out, but I remember having Dick's Picks. I was in my third house growing up, so I was probably, like, 13 or 14 and, like, listened to Cryptical Envelopment and was like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is <laughs> cool. And, um, yeah, just just love just loved it and you know I, I i dabbled with a lot of music and i've had like little moments with with so mon many different genres and so many different bands you know like I, I was never just all dead or i was never just all fish or or disco biscuits like i understood kind of what they were doing but you know a lot of my heart lies with jazz um a lot of my heart lies with like singer songwriter stuff totally and, and that's kind of like i think what makes me me is you know, obviously those influences, but, you know, I'd put Jeff Buckley up there against like anybody I've ever, I mean, he's literally yeah. kind of like my, my number one, yeah. um, you know, same with David Bowie and, you know, but I, I, I understand the dead and I, and I respect the hell out of it. And, you know, it's just all, it's all cool. It's all cool stuff. Music in the industry and, being in a band and playing music and hot damn. It's so cool. You know? Yeah. It's the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. On that note, Wes wants to know, dude, you guys going to stream again? Yes. Drive through. Drive through. You do yeah. drive up, listen to a. Yeah. Know. Like, are you going to do a Well, well, well the one, the one question is a live stream. Have you thought about doing a drive through tour? Drive through, you know, like, like, like the well, drive-ins. Drive I don't call them drive-throughs because drive-through is, you know, in, is is like we drive up and we play a song for like two minutes and then we hand you a receipt and then you leave. You know, the drive-in. Yeah, the people want to hear you play again. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely got some things in the works. We got beat up. You know, if if you didn't know this, Michael, we were one of the first to do the drive-ins in Arizona and or the country for the most part. Um, I was not aware of that. Yeah, here in Arizona, we got a lot of national press about it, and it was it was a really big deal, and and it was awesome to do. And then summer hit in Arizona, and you know, you can't really do anything outside. So now the weather's getting nice again, and it's going to be nice for the next you know five or six months. So um, yeah, we definitely got a lot of things in, in the works. You know, our, our number one focus is keeping everyone safe, uh, and yeah. if we can't put on a show that's going to make you guys you know, safe, but we're not doing it. Um, that's, that's just it. You know, there's gotta be guidelines. The band has its own guidelines. So if the place isn't following that, like we got, we got to just hang on. I hear you. All right. I know you've answered this a bunch before in the past, Yes. but just about anything wants to know why the hell you called Spafford. This is for John Stafford. It's okay. We've been called. Yeah. Why are you Stafford? You can call the worst. Asking John McKellany. Um, yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Evan. Thank you, Evan. Really thank appreciate you, it. Evan. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to just keep this the short story. But um, all the other good band names were taken, so so we just we stuck with that one. It's it's our no, it's our it's our buddy's middle name. His name yeah. is Chuck Spafford Johnson. Uh, Chuck has been part of this band essentially since the beginning of it um, as a friend and a supporter and uh, and then started doing lights for us and he, we were on the road for the first you know four or five years of this band with him doing lights and we were just blazing through the country just screwing shit up left and right and um, you know he's been here through through everything with it and then Chuck had turned into quite the uh, poet and recently has released a book and um and so if you're interested or you already have chuck's book of poems he's he's got it but 
we take a lot of, I take a lot of his lyrics that he writes there, the poems that he, that he writes, and I turn them into lyrics of, of songs. Right yeah. On. And Modest Yahoo <laughs> definitely called this Stratford. Yeah. So it's a funny story, right? Because we met Modest Yahoo. We were in New Orleans. Yeah. We were playing at House of Blues. We were playing like upstairs in the, uh, um, the parish, I believe it's called. And we were all dressed as like lemurs and I was a crocodile and there was a giraffe and, you know, one of those like wild nights in, in NOLA and, and you know, yeah, you can't in, have, you can't have one lemur in NOLA. Right. Right. You gotta have multiple. So we were all, we were all animals like zoo animals and our crew was dressed all in safari gear. Like Thank they were, more. they were, thank you. Pluck yeah. yeah. Keep going. They were all in, um, like safari, you know, they had the hats and like short shorts and like, you know, they were the, the zookeepers basically. Um, but anyway, Modest Yahoo like showed up to the show and, <laughs> and, and we had a, we had a case that somebody wrote Stratford on mm -hmm. S T R A T R F O R D. And Modest Yahoo came on stage and we did this like, hip hop thing he was rapping like it was freaking amazing you know like i felt like the modest yahoo like backing band and he was tearing it up and um my recording is out there somewhere with him it's it was super cool but he said thanks stratford which we just believe that as soon as he walked on stage like it happens but we think he just kind of forgot the name of the band and may have just looked at the case and said oh yeah he says stratford so that's why we're that's he said he called it stratford that's what makes think. makes That's, sense. Yeah. F Fantasy wants to know if you got an umph story. I, I mean, look, there's a lot of them. We spent a lot of time with those boys. There are <laughs> there are some I can tell, and there are most I cannot. But right. one of my one of my favorite. This is really hit home with me, and it, and it and I and I loved it. Um, so he's so we were we were sound checking at. The first show that we did with them was that I, I might get this wrong. The National in Virginia, I may get this wrong. Um, but it was like the first show that we did. And we drove all the way out there and we're setting up finally. And like, we didn't know where any of the guys were and we never met any of them before. And like, you know, you see them on TV and you see, you know, you know who yeah. they are and stuff. And yeah, yeah. all of a sudden I look to my right and, and um, Brendan Bayless is like right next to me, like on my spot, you know? And I turn, I was like, you know, and he goes, I, I, man, I, I may butcher the story, but he said something like, don't like, basically, don't you fuck this up, you know? <laughs> and, and I was like, holy shit. And he's like, yeah, I'm just Jerry with it, you know? And I was like, dude, but I took it so seriously, you know? And it just showed like how funny of a guy and like, you know, that, that they all are. And, you know, we yeah. really got to know them really, really well. And, uh, you know, you got to have a good sense of humor being on them. So, oh, hell yeah. I can't they, imagine. Yeah, they definitely taught us very well. Chris wants to know, where's Peanut? Peanut, for 10 bucks, Peanut is is downstairs, probably sleeping, but she's doing well. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> All right, Chris. Jason, thank you so much for the hey. 15. Very generous. Big Jason, 14 Brandon You want to round it up? Or are you, are you putting uh, we, all, we, all, we always round up here. We're optimists. Ah, dig it. Bra Brandon, thank you so much. You're welcome. Look, it is your student. He wants to know what it's like playing it MSG. Is. What was it like playing Madison Square Garden? Look, it was cool, but it wasn't, you know, we weren't on the main stage. We were in the bleachers. Um, but holy shit, it was freaking cool. And yeah. funny story to loop this whole fucking thing together. Howie Singer, who's Jason Singer's brother, is the director at the next who is the one who then invited us to come over to Madison Square Garden and play. Hilarious. How funny is that? Small world. It's the same advice Bayless <laughs> gave me on my weeding night. Well. <laughs> my weeding. My weeding night. Yeah. All right. Well, that is all of our super chats so far, I think. Think. Let me uh, let me go sh go through and make sure here that we got everyone. That's awesome. Uh, you got anything else you want to play? Any other 
Anything else that you've got a hankering for? Any questions that you saw you want to dig into? I know we've, we're pushing almost two hours now. This is great. This has been a breeze, man. This is the closest thing that I've had to a real show. A real show. Yeah. yeah. This, is, yeah. This, is, this is my version of a show. And we're making uh, tips. I had no idea that there was any tips involved. You know? Like I said, these people are these people are awesome. It's it's, it's a good thing we didn't we didn't play fish because then we would you know totally get blocked. Dude, okay, so I, I'm so glad you brought this up. I just, you know, I just no 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 no. It's funny. So we, so there's a couple there's, the, the, there's a couple things. One, um, almost all of my streams get blocked because there's so many so many bands don't get like what you said before. Just like just give the music for free. People are still buy your stuff. They'll go to your shows. Whatever. Well, I said that uh, that that at the beginning. Then you charge them fucking out the wazoo for it later on once yeah, they're at the, at, the, yeah. at the beginning at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, sure. But anyway, uh, Rick Beato did a fish video. Um, and, uh, I talked to him about it and, you know, he reached out to the management, the same people I talked to before. And, uh, I guess they, you know, thought about it, uh, long and hard or, or whatever, you know, in the past six months since my whole debacle happened and, um, and they gave him permission to do it. Mm. So perhaps the tide is turning. So that's good. Possibly. We will. I mean, Tread, we will tread lightly and hope for the best. Yeah, exactly. My, my, you know, right, exactly. But I, I, I do. It is worth. It is worth noting that uh, Rick got a pass. Wow. So that's good. Congrats Thanks. to my friend Rick. Congrats, uh, Rick. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, just to wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to all the mods. You guys crush it as always. And all the super chatters, Deuce DeMortis, Tom Haviland, Dark Live, Mark Jablon, Spar, Jeff Stewart, Richard Oglevy, I don't know how to say your last name, forgive me, Wharf Rat Joe, Cody Myers, Kevin Bloomer, Blakely Kane, Ben Robinson, Blaze Stafford, M. Dicey 22, Aerialist, Mike Delaney. Um, you know what? Wow, uh, that's a oh, lot. No, there's more. Dustin Claypool, oh. Jarrett Kagan. Chris Nakamore, Matthew Swanson, Jackson Brown, Fishman Fletch, Daniel Dalton, Paul Warren, wow. Michael Mar Marullo, uh, Bluebird11. I missed that one before, brother. Uh, good to see you, and thank you for the donation. Yeah, uh, Jeff Kurtz, Malice Funk, Paul Mishaw, Ben Hoffman, Starwind, Westpool, Malice Funk, again, just about anything, Evan Plectramora, Chris Ogre Lopez, Jason Ooh. Weinstock, Brandon Johnson, and finally Jackson Brown. How about wow. all that? Wow. Thank dude, you. Dude, awesome, that, right? That's, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, all right. So Paul Warren was the last super chat that I received that I saw um, that uh, had, a, had a clip in it. And so I'm going to play it for you for our we way time out. Time stamps are back, huh? Time stamps are back. And he's got, he's got two minutes and 30 in. At wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. John McLaughlin, Shotkey Joy. Have you seen this one? No. All right, here we go. We'll play this for a minute. Anything else you want to tell the people before we go? Where can they all? Where can they find you? Jersey Moss everywhere. Hey, now I you know um, have some issues with that, but Jersey Moss on Instagram. <laughs> you have issues with that. Send me a follow. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I've always wanted to change the Jersey Moss um, at some point, but it's it's stuck with me. It's like, you know, it was the thing I had when I was a kid. You know, it was like XX, Jersey Moss, yeah. XX at fucking, you know, uh, AOL.com. Well, now, it's, now, it's now it's your only fans handle, right? It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's 150 <laughs> a month, you know? Uh, um, yeah, find me there. Find me, you know, find me at... at you know, on Facebook and all that stuff and, you know, find the band Spafford, Spafford Music um, everywhere and, you know, have a listen. There's there's tons of stuff out there for free. Um, if you like what you hear, you know, send me a message. I'd love to respond to you and, and talk about it. And, uh, yeah, we'll come to a city near you very soon. So hang in there. We love all you guys. And thank you awesome. so much for, for the donors. And when, and when you're on the East Coast, I'll be there. And uh, I don't know if you ever – I don't know if it's going to happen next year if you ever go to Nam or anything else like that. But if I make it out your way, 
I'll be sure to come say hello. And I'm dead serious, dude. I, I really think we should do the occasional one-off video where we find ones like that, uh, like that dead show and just point out random stuff that no one else would pick up on. I, I will continue to scour the internet for videos like all that. Right. Yes. I got, I got the next one. Shoot okay. me, an, shoot me an email when you got the one after that. We'll make okay. it happen. Okay. All right. So here, so don't go anywhere. I'm going to play, I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to play this John McLaughlin here, Shot Key Joy, live at Montreux 1976 for a minute. Yep. Again, mods, thank you so much. You guys are the best in the business. Thank you so much, everybody who donated, who watched. And again, if you guys are unfamiliar with Spafford, please go check them out on YouTube. Um, really just a bitchin' band. Here we go. And Brian, you're the man. Thanks for doing this. You're the man. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, man. Good night, everyone. Brian, you stay right there. Okay. Peace and love.